Okay, today's call is going to be a pretty just wing it type thing. Um, we've got a few things going on to talk about, not too much eventful stuff, at least not eventful stuff that's going to impact storage providers on a day to day basis a little bit. First off, I want to, uh, we expect to have another release out. Um, hopefully today, but if not today, tomorrow for the full Windows software install to clean up a lot of the things that people in the beta group have run into. Uh, this release will be a full open beta, so we'll put it out there in the public and anybody who has Windows that wants to give it a try can. Um, and it'll still be beta, so you know if you're not interested in participating in the sort of, you know, early part of it, then you might want to hold off, but it's getting really close. So I think at this point it, it would be a, a safe bet to do the beta. Assuming all works out well, uh, we expect to probably call that a final release next week sometime. Uh, and then same thing, same time, uh, when we release that, we're going to dump a public beta out there of the what we're calling supervisor light version which is this uh basic um add-on for people that don't have the full version software that does the nice price changing and um auto re-announce work so um we'll put that out there on a one week beta i don't think there's really going to be much there there might be a couple of things that pop up that people discover but mostly that thing's gonna be ready to roll. So if you have a, a basic provider instance, um, that software is coming in the next day and you'll be able to go ahead and roll that as well. I do want to confirm and reiterate that by uh, October 31st, uh, which will be four year anniversary of the project, we will uh, stop rebating software altogether. Um, everybody who bought a license up until that date will still get, obviously, all the rebates that they were promised. But future software sales will go a different direction. Um, not sure exactly what that means. It might be three months from now we decide to go ahead and start up basic licenses on a 50% rebate or full versions get 25% or something like that. But there's no guarantees. And at this point, um, our thought process is that, that they're just done. So we'll see what we end up doing, but uh, you need to recognize that because this time around, you know, he really means it. I know when we did the April, May thing, a lot of people probably said, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and they'll provide rebates ongoing. And it was what it was, but we're at a point right now where we literally just can't do more rebates on that software. Uh, going forward, it's it's just not financially feasible for us. So, um, and the network's pretty well built out based on the people that showed up in December anyway. So really the next thing that we expect to happen is we expect there to be another wave of growth coming. I can't tell you when it's gonna happen and I can't tell you what the, the motivation or the, the the thing is that's gonna start it, but we do expect another wave of exponential growth. Partly what happened in December was we limited growth on, you know, the Examiner sales to a thousand when we could have easily booked four or 5,000 orders. And then following up on that, we did end up with a very large wait list. But then as the year progressed and people really, you know, saw the macro breakdown and they saw, you know, kind of, a chance to sort of listen to, to people say, well, you know, it's going to take three years before you, you know, really see any serious storage on these things. So then the wait list dissipated a little and we ended up with some sales, but not, you know, the, the huge numbers. Um, and that was actually okay. You know, I mean, we, in the, in the middle part of the year, we really weren't looking to grow the network. We were looking to sort of consolidate the network and it was a, I don't know how you want to call it, a distillation, I guess, you know, where essentially we didn't really want a bunch of people that were here that were ultimately going to leave the minute things got a little bit challenging or the minute they started to sort of think, well, you know, this is going to take longer or whatever. We need those people gone because, you know, once we get to this place where we are onboarding a lot of real storage, 
you know, it's expensive when you have to rebuild storage on a new unit. It's not cheap. And so, you know, getting those people out now is good. And if I look at the KPIs that we put together, um, let me pull them up to see exactly where we are right now. So right now, the active list is 3334. And if you remember, it was up, I think it eclipsed 4,000 at one point at its zenith. Um, but the deal is, is that of, of those, we also have the secondary list, which is the license list. Uh, those active are 2,703. And that's a good number. And that 2,703 is putting out capacity of 65.9 petabytes, whereas the 3,334, so, you know, 630, 620 some odd units are only uh, adding so 71.9 capacity on the unlicensed, 65.9 on the license. So you're only talking about six petabytes um, that are accruing to those 620 some odd providers. So, you know, we're not losing all that much when they've gone away. Um, now, some people will ch chime in and say, yeah, but... The whole deal is the DIYers that came from Chia have, you know, a million petabytes and they're not putting them online because you can't make any money and PETA, Chia is so much better and blah, blah, blah. You know, it is what it is. You know, we're building a different thing for a very different reason and a different use. And, um, you know, if they go back to wherever they went and keep their, you know, petabytes online over there, that's okay. At some point, this thing will eclipse anything that's out there, and ultimately, they'll come rushing back because that's what they do. They chase, and, you know, we can't stop people from chasing, but at the same time, we can discourage them in this network growth phase, and that's what we did. So things are looking pretty good on that 2,700 uh, active providers in that, you know, there's about 1,700 uh, terabytes stored on those and of course it's better to have them stored on 2600 than it is on 4000 because everybody makes a little bit more than they would if you know the faithless were still here um so that's been a pretty good sort of situation but now and 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 you know very clearly that we've been hard at work doing a lot of things you know on the infra side uh the first one was grafana you know we don't really need to revisit the PTSD there, but um, everybody knows that in the first couple of months of, of this year, Grafana was, you know, a, a profane word. And it just really was not set up well by us. And, and we had a lot of things that we needed to learn, a big learning curve we needed to scale. And, and, and we did. And we did a good job of it and, you know, got it screwed around now to where it really does service us well. And and I think it's ready for ne the next exponential growth. Um, the second thing that came up after the Grafana was the contracting. And everybody knows what happened there. And that turned out to be a pretty challenging equation. But we've done a lot of work on that. And there's still a little bit left to do that we're working on. But we have an infrastructure there that's really cool now. We've got this big Kafka cluster that's uh, very you know performant and scalable and also very robust so durable so um i think again we now feel comfortable that we can take that next exponential leap with no issue and you know i'm sure there's some new issues awaiting us on the next leap but that'll never not be the case and i think part of what we've done in in upgrading all the stuff into these storms is we've upgraded ourselves right we know a little bit more about how to approach these things we know kind of a, a process and a, what people's individual strengths are and, you know, where we can go for additional resourcing if we need it. And so at the end of the day, I think all across the board, I think we feel very comfortable that we're ready for that next exponential growth. So what's going to bring it down the path? Well, you know, the, the, really, the really easy answer to that is Jerome, you know, but <laughs> Jerome don't want to play. So, you know we're going to have to just kind of ride this out into whatever period of time uh, before what I think is going to happen. You know, I think it's already happened, to be on honestly. If you listen to Lynn Alden, um, they've broken treasuries and, and bonds in general are are in a really weird place right now. And, and you know, the, 
I don't even know if the UK is still a country officially today. I mean, they they are in a really interesting place. And of course, there's a lot of things going on around the rest of the world. So um, this can't last forever. I mean, Jerome wants to keep raising rates. They got to crush inflation. Inflation keeps coming in hotter than expected. Um, I don't think they get too many more bites at that apple, by the way, before they start seriously breaking stuff. And as soon as they start seriously breaking stuff, they're going to stop. And the minute they stop, they they know what's coming because there is a enormous amount of cash on the sidelines right now. Um, all that tether that's out there is just waiting to go to work. There's a whole bunch of BUSD now. There's a whole bunch of USDC now. There's a whole bunch of additional stables that are just sitting out there waiting to go to work um, in the crypto space. So what I kind of see happening is at some point they're going to blink. And when they do, there's going to be a rally. Now, it 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 isn't clear to me whether that rally is going to be a big right shoulder that goes up for six or seven months and then comes back down again even harder. There's a lot of people that believe that. Um, I don't I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I think ultimately, if they do turn it loose, it can keep on running. And, you know, not to dive too deep into that, the, the whole point being that nothing's moving right now, right, in, in the generalized space. So um, people are not, you know, taking on new projects. They're not deploying money to projects they aren't sure about and so forth and such. So the next exponential growth probably has to piggyback on any kind of a market, you know, pivot uh, that comes down the path. So we just have to keep our fingers crossed and watch that closely and see what happens. There's a lot of money out there, though. So I, I really don't, I really don't, even if it does break down, I don't see it going crazy low and staying there. I think it'll be a V-shaped or whatever. So that's the the, the big part of it. The second big part of it is is that um, we are in the process right now of starting to do the VC meetings. They've gone good so far. We haven't, you know, sealed up any deal yet, obviously, but um, we are getting a good understanding about what people are looking for and really getting our, our foot in the door of, of different uh, places. So that's going well. And, you know, when I have some news to announce on that, that's gonna change things pretty significantly. I don't know exactly what that means, but you know, I can imagine that the minute I am able to announce that we have secured funding for the future, um, that will likely cause a number of different sort of follow-on things to occur. And as soon as those follow-on things start to occur, I'm sure that our thing will begin to look attractive again to those YouTubers who are always out there looking for the next thing. And then we'll probably see some more of that activity. And then ultimately, that could kickstart the next exponential growth. Um, people are probably saying, to themselves, why do we need exponential growth right now? We need more storage on the network. Why are you selling storage? Um, we are. And we've started the process to do that in a you know um, prolific and productive kind of way. I think one of the things that people don't give us credit for is that we do put plans in order and we do follow our plans and we do get them accomplished. And, you know, people that DM me and say, why can't you just do this? You know, everybody else just does this, you know, or, you know, why can't you just go out and, you know, get a bunch of free marketing by doing some specific thing? And, you know, I get it. You know, everybody has their own take on how this all works, but, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff to that. And you have to make sure you're ready across the board. So like, for instance, you know, if you say, well, why don't, why don't we go out there and do some kind of like, you know, um, Facebook marketing and advertising, put up a bunch of ads there. Okay, we could do that. Where are you going to send them? You know, where are you going to send those, those, those ad people? Are you going to send them to the scpri.me website? And why, if you are, you know? You want to sell them to storage, so I guess you're going to sell them to the XNS website, but I don't think anybody even knows what XNS is, is yet, right? So, you know, it would have to be a, like a real introductory type type thing. And then they're going to start saying, okay, well, let me do some investigation on this XNS. Well, nobody's ever heard of them. They don't even have a Twitter account. I mean, what's going on? There's a lot of work to be done. And then when they get there and they start trying to do their research on it, their due diligence, 
and there's no I- information about what it is or how it works or why you'd use it or choose it over Wasabi or over AWS or whatever. So we've been building all that. You know, I told you several weeks ago, Henry has been tasked with becoming that person who is putting it all together and then in terms of, you know, how does it work? How do you access it? How do you use it? What are the benefits? What are the the features? What are the 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 competitive uh, advantages that we have over other things? And so those documents and articles are all getting posted daily. And now the next step is we started today by posting uh, a couple of social accounts. We now have an official Twitter account up, XNS Cloud. We have an official Facebook account, XNS Cloud. And so now you can start to send people. You definitely want to follow those accounts if you can, like them. Um, start tweeting out, you know, those hashtags and 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 those accounts and help us get some people drawn into those places. And then what you're going to see from us now going forward on a regular calendar basis is we will start putting out on those social properties links to those articles that we've been writing. And those will go out on a regular cadence, probably one a week, maybe two a week. I'm not sure yet which one we're going to do. But we'll get those out on a regular cadence. And that will start getting some brand awareness. Um, we have engaged uh, an entity called Site Trail, which will ultimately do press release distribution for us. We have actually two press releases that are just waiting to go when we're ready to do it. I'm not quite ready to pull that trigger. Um, like all things, there are always like an inexpensive option to do some real basic stuff. But if you want to do something that really hits a niche, you know, segment, you know, like IT professionals that are interested in cloud storage got to spend up some money to 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 reach those people in their native environments. So, I'm not quite ready to pull that trigger, but that's coming in on our on our roadmap, our marketing roadmap. Um the product itself went live a few weeks ago, but we've been tweaking and tuning some things. There's 50 free gigabytes for everybody to use on the network. Um but we have a couple of things that we're doing internally with erasure code ratios and settings that are going to alter that a little bit. So we're not in any rush today to onboard, you know, 65 petabytes because we wind up having some issues as we tweak and tune um, that stuff. But we're happily willing to accept, you know, hundreds or even, you know, a couple of petabytes tomorrow if they showed up. We just don't want to, you know, get caught up like we did in last December um, but in a different way, right? We don't want to have like, you know, the whole world come storming in and then realize, oh, we're not quite ready for them. So like billing and things like that, subscriptions, those are all set up and working, but we want to get some good testing under our belt and all of that. So um, it's, it's, it's the plan is being uh, worked the way we've set it up. And if you just stay patient, keep an eye on what we're doing, you'll see that the plan is actually uh, taking shape and moving forward. But again, it's all hinging upon us securing funding because right now I can't spend any real significant dollars on anything outside of continuing to keep the the team together and not shedding off any resources. We've already shed off two personnel that I consider to be almost mandatory or necessary, but we had to sort of walk from them for now until we can get that funding secured. So hopefully I don't have to get to a place where I have to let more go Hopefully we get to the place instead where the licensing and everything that we're doing right now, starting to onboard storage customers gives us a continued lifeline of runway until we get past this next cap raise. And then once we get past the cap raise, then it's Katie bar the doors because we'll have 15 months worth of an enhanced team. I expect to almost double the team and we'll have a pretty large bucket set aside for marketing. And we have a fairly large bucket set aside for exchange operations and all of the stuff that goes along with the coin. So that's uh, that's our current situation and what we're looking at. And I think we are very much now starting to uh, look forward to exponentializing the growth of the network um, in advance of the coming year. So um, when it will happen, I don't know. But the other thing that we're doing in that regards just so you can have an idea of road mapping and so forth. We have a couple of things that we need to do, some that are potentially uh, revenue producing. One is we know we need to really now uh, move back to the direction of focusing really hard on the relayer itself. 
we've kind of got caught up in this contracting and then of course the software licensing applications and and that's all done been done really well and i think that you know the devs are pretty pleased with the re- progress and results that they've achieved and now it's time we get back into the relayer development and with the relayer it works really well and it works on a pretty you know reasonable scale box but we have so many things that we can do with the relayer that you know we're really focusing on our roadmap to do and and so it starts out with providing um hardware relayers in different form factors and sizes and scale um to make it really easy for somebody to plug and play and just you know begin to start storing stuff on the data on uh, network and you know one of the things i talked with the stakeholders today about is you know we've talked at length about you know archival being sort of a low hanging fruit you know easy entry because there are a lot of applications out there it's just pretty simple to use it doesn't require a ton of people accessing the data set you know it just has a lot of easy sort of features to 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 make our network sync um but one of the things that's really big in this whole cloud onboarding right now is a lot of data is being onboarded to the cloud but it's going up uh in terms of both public cloud and hybrid cloud so a lot of things are sort of stopping halfway on the way up or some data is going halfway up and some is going all the way up and it's that hybridization that's going on that MSPs and cloud service professionals are really you know being called upon to guide organizations and in our case it's really pretty cool because you know a lot of people said early on well who's going to ever stand up a relay remember shadid said that he said he said nobody's ever going to do that my my customers will never do that they can just go to amazon and go to a url and you know i said well you know that's your perspective and i i certainly understand where you're coming from but it's just not right i mean a lot of companies are putting in uh nodes between them and the cloud for a lot of different reasons. There's all kinds of different things that the cache can do in a relayer. The cache can be segmented to deal with ransomware and object locks. Um, It can be segmented for prioritization. It can be segmented off in, in different kinds of departmental ways. It can be segmented off so that if you're running a relayer tied to a clustered backend database for the metadata, uh, so that ultimately you end up having multiple um, facilities and, and campuses accessing, all accessing the same data set. Um, what can happen is, is that cache can be segmented off, you know, by division, by, you know, uh, function line functionality, different kinds of, you know, corporation breakdowns that they need to do. There can be all kinds of different access privileges and prioritization put on on the cache level right which is different from say an identity and access management level uh prioritization so one of the things that's going to end up coming out of this is that people are going to recognize that our solution just continues to get richer and richer and richer as we develop it out um and ultimately superior to almost anything else that's out there um, as we drive in performance and, and capability into the whole thing. So it's a really awesome time to be working on it, but we got to get pivoted back to the relayer um, and, and get that out there. And so one of the things I mentioned was we got to you know build hardware versions. So I can see a headliner to you or for you box that goes out um, anywhere from you know OneDrive all the way up to 60 drive configurations to do that hybridization uh, model, put a hybrid node there. Um, and then ultimately, we can do things like we've talked about. If you do set up that backend database correctly, or maybe remote workers end up with little NUC devices that they set up, or they even load the software up on their workstations, laptops, and whatever they're using to access. Um, and and then they're they're just single relayer instances without databases, so that they actually can talk to the corporate database. Uh, remotely and work from home. That's a big one. So we really need to get back to that, really focus hard on that. And I think as we do that, that relayer thing will drive one of the next levels of exponentialization because it will be the thing that draws in a lot of people into the cloud storage side of the house. And then, of course, as we see a lot more people showing up over there, then we're going to see a whole bunch of more people show up on the network side of the fence. So um you know that's kind of the whole sort of situation 
Um, anyway, that's the deal there. Um, it's my story. I'm sticking to it. The uh, um, other thing that uh, we do need to do and we are working through is we are working with third-party manufacturers. Right now, we have a, a thing on the back end we're doing in supervisors so that we can recognize their serialization. Um, in addition to people that you know here, like Juicy, um, we are talking actually to the people that build our chassis. Because one of the things that happens if you go into console and you look at our live map, you'll see that we don't really have anybody in China. I mean, we have a few, but not much, a couple, handful, tops. And even the whole Asia area, even down into, you know, the, the Philippines and Indonesia and Japan, Korea, we don't have that much going on, which is interesting because if you look at Filecoin, um, you'll see they've got a huge China map because they really you know, focused hard on China early on. And if you look at Helium, they've got a very, you know, robust China map. So I talked at length with our uh, manufacturer in China that builds these chassis because they build these whole units. I mean, they they, they use their own no-name, you know, Beijing produced, Shenzhen produced motherboards and, you know, memory and hard drives and stuff. And we just didn't want to do that. We use our own from Taiwan. But um, the... Uh, their deal is is that they would build out the whole unit to their own spec and then as a third party manufacturer sell into their own country. So with any luck here, I expect we'll see a China contingent begin to pop up. And then again, let's think that through. If that happens for us, what will end up happening is, is that we will get all the revenue from the licensing from them. Um, and you know, they'll grow out their country, which is huge by any, you know, aspect. <laughs> And um, as that money pours in and growing the network, it does a couple of things. First of all, it doesn't hurt any of you, right? Because the business that's going to go on those nodes will have to come from China. So we've also had that conversation with them in saying, well, look, this doesn't make any sense if you aren't willing to also go out and try and work on the other side of the house, which is selling storage to your customers that are going to be uh, using this stuff. And so they get that. So, so that is part of the conversation. But the good news is we can onboard another 100 petabytes or 200 petabytes, and it's probably going to almost impact you guys very little. Now, the place where it will impact you is we will have to pay out more in incentives, you know, and so forth. So that those wallets will, you know, degrade quicker. But I assume that what will happen as we onboard that level, I mean, if we get into an exponential growth, look. Let's not let's be clear about this so that everybody understands what I'm saying because I'm not not sure this is totally clear. We're not selling hand over fist licenses right now. If, if you think we are, you know that's just not the case. It's it's not been the case from the beginning. You know, there's only been a total of a couple thousand DIYers on the network. Of the couple thousand DIYers, uh, a fair number were you know these people running 20, 30, 40 nodes. So that got boiled down pretty quickly. And then the people that just had no intention of spending it, even dollar one, you know, to kind of be involved as they disappeared, you know, then it really boiled it down to what it is. Well, you know, now we're in this situation, we have probably about 1,200 examiners and about 1,500 DIYers. So yeah, you can still run into me and say, DIYers built this network. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but um, the deal there is, is that, you know, um, if we onboarded another 3,000 providers and they were all licensed with full licensed units, um, that would put an awful lot of revenue into the uh, pockets of our development team. You know, right now we're looking at, I don't know, three to five licenses per day and they're split between the 99 and the 350. So, you know, it's not a large number. You know, it, 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 it's good because it's fleshing out the network from the people that are here, and that's great. But what needs to happen is we need to get to that next big exponentiation. And China would be a great way to do it because it wouldn't hurt you. It would give a lot of money into our pockets. And then ultimately, what we would be able to do then is we'd be able to extrapolate that money out and say, okay, you know, a bunch of licensing sold. Now we can go ahead and secure four months of runway for the staff onboard a few more personnel, blah, blah, blah. And then the rest of it we can use for growth operations, right? We can use for marketing, we can use for sales, we can use, and we'll need to use to buy our own coin because we have to, you know, continue to buy to, to populate rebates. So, you know, there you go. And we have that there as well. So, so that's kind of uh, that thing. And so we have the software development 
pretty far along. I think they're really close to being able to deliver it to these third-party manufacturers. That should happen any day now. Um, so over the next week, you know, several software releases are going to hit the network all around the same time. But we're ready. I think we're really at that place right now where we're really ready to to start onboarding storage. It works and 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 now, so it's just a matter of really doing that marketing and moving it forward. All right, let me uh, just look at uh, my notes here to see what other things uh, that we wanted to talk about. One of the things I'm going to be doing um, is uh, right now we only really have uh, one dedicated support rep who really understands the software and installs. I'm going to be getting out licenses to our other support reps so they can set up and learn and, and, and get comfortable with it so that we'll add them to the mix so that you'll have more people to, to help out when you run into little challenges and so forth. So that's happening. Um, we're making a couple of changes in terms of Grafana. You, you've seen some of them show up along the way. Um, you know, we'll continue to keep driving that. A lot of it uh, is stuff on the back end that you don't necessarily see, but it all ends up to more stability in what's going on on the network. The SPFs are drawing some pretty good interest. Um, you know, I can't really speak too much to it. I, I certainly can't talk anything about valuation or, you know, future on them i can just tell you what they're worth but they're not what they're worth but what how they work um and henry uh has a task right now on his plate to actually do the full diagram of uh you know what an spf is what its history was where they came from how they turned out to have the supply they do how they ended up in the hands they're in right now um you know what they ultimately represent on the network and what we expect them to do in the future going forward I expect that article to be done in not too far off um, and we'll get that online and, and that'll go up on our socials. So that's a, an interesting one. I think that's I think that covers most of the stuff that we need to get past today. One of the things you are going to notice is that all of the websites uh, will have legal agreements attached to them now and your further uh, participation in the network. Uh, will be considered as sent to those documents. I'll point them out in the channels. Uh, probably we'll do a one-on-one -on -one pager on that here pretty quickly to explain what they are and what, what where they matter and so forth. But we do have as, uh, terms of services now for all of the different features on the network. The next one we really have to work through is a SLA uh, for people that buy storage on the network. Um, I don't I'm not worried that we don't have it in place right now as people come aboard because everybody knows that we're going to just take care of people if anything happens. And right now we're doing a lot of deal making with people. So, you know, we have a little bit of time to get that SLA completed exactly the way we need it to be. Um, but that'll be coming here very shortly. Oh, and yeah, we do have a couple things going on with consensus mining. Um, RP Crypto stood up one of the open source pools. The original open source pools were the first five pools on the network. And then um, Sia Mining came along and then Luxor came along and, you know, then Luxor excluded themselves. And then Sia Mining was all that was left. Um, those open source pools turned out to be, you know, a lot of work to kind of maintain and keep up. But ultimately, not a bad piece of software. It does work and it, it does do the job if you can mine the server and, you know, are willing to kind of babysit them and so forth. Well, RP Crypto has had a pretty good run, I think, with his um, SCP, uh, you know, OTC sort of transfer for people looking for collateral. Um, and so he's di dived in deeper and set up this pool. It's working well and it's got some hash rate on it now. So if you are doing consensus, you might consider throwing some hash rate his way. And today he helped us uh, with another pool in China called DX Pool. Um, DX Pool is tied very closely with the folks over at Gold Shell. And, you know, the whole notion there, by the way, is at some point these S11s are going to fade into obscurity. We're already seeing a lot of attrition. So we knew we needed to have the backstopping of some of these other companies. And we didn't have much luck before this gold shell model that just came out because they weren't very efficient models that were out on the street and they didn't make for good profitability on our coin because for whatever reason people on our network don't believe we're you know to be valued at the same as other projects just like ours that are not as far along as ours um i still don't get that by the way <laughs> and it doesn't really matter how much we discuss it because I lose that argument every time because 
All anybody has to do is point at the price and say scoreboard and they win. I hate that they win, but it is true. People don't believe we are as good as other projects and I don't I don't know why, but it is what it is and so they won't pay more than 20 cents for the coin at this point and it is what it is, you know, it's just it's a tough situation all around. It makes it so that people will not put S- uh, ASICs on our chain because they are more valuable on SIA, <laughs> which is a network in turmoil. I mean, you literally can't describe it any other way. They fired their original founder. He's you know, come back to argue. I mean, it's, you know, it's you can't make it up. And yet they're, you know, 20 times more valuable than we are. And there's no reason for it. There's literally no reason for it. They don't have paying customers. They don't have anything that we don't have. They, they, they don't have anything we don't have. And in fact, we have more than they have. So, um, <laughs> go figure. What they do have is Binance. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a thing. Um, but anyway, back to my original point, we would like to get that big gold shell miner, the new one that's coming, which is 17 terahash, uh, because that miner starts to look a little bit more efficient on our network, even if it isn't quite yet profitable. Um, you know, the whole notion being that, you know, if we do get a moon coming down the road, that there will be, you know, people that will think, well, you know, this is a coin to spec mine or to dive into. And so DX pool is very tightly aligned with those folks over at Gold Shell. And so it made sense to put a China pool in and he's got it up and operational now. I expect to see an announcement shortly and that will put us back to having three mining pools. There is no current roadmap uh, understanding of proof of stake at this point, as I've said before multiple times. There's no reason for it uh, today. So the idea is we would prefer to let markets sort themselves. We would prefer all the five or 12 or 122 uh, level ones that are out there that are vying for that business to really shake out and you know boil down into three or four. You know, probably S, Solana, you know, maybe Avalanche, maybe Algorand, maybe, you know, Cosmo. I mean, there's a couple that you know that that are almost certain to be there just because of the financial backing they have on them. And, you know, Charles, <laughs> he'll be there no matter what. Um, so we're just going to be content to wait and see how that all shakes out before we actually start talking about an actual move over to POS. Because... I would like to tie the two things together. I would like to tie together moving to POS with moving to a different custodial uh, L1 because we know at some point we have to abandon this blockchain and set up on something that is more uh, not a security. Um, And, you know, in in this case, our coin is not a security, but the idea that we literally can shut down the blockchain is. So that puts a weird kind of spin on things that we're going to have to monitor and down the road we're going to have to move away from. And also that'll be a good thing anyway because, you know, maintaining a blockchain is really not sexy work. It's not something we really want to be behind. But the other thing is we love that our fee structure is what it is. Right now you can do, you know, millions of transactions and pay, you know, a handful of SCP. Whereas there are times last year where Filecoin and storage literally came to a crawl. They came to a standstill because the F fees, the gas was just so high that they couldn't even really transact efficiently. They're paying more and way more in gas than they were in their own incentives and so forth. So we have to wait for that to all turn into, you know, an efficient thing, probably another one to three years. And then I think we'll see some ability to make that transition over. Anyway, that's it for today. As far as I can tell. Um, we'll take your questions and if those lead to longer, broader, more fun, interesting convos, we'll let that happen. And if you don't have any questions, um, then I'm going to go make a thing of popcorn. No, I mean, really make a thing of popcorn, not like there's some interesting thing about to happen and I'm going to get some popcorn while I watch it or whatever. Nobody gets me. Um, all right. Doesn't look like there's any questions this week. (laughs) I guess it's because Henry wasn't here to to tell his side of the story because you only talk now when Henry's around. So um, we'll get back and do this again this next week. Uh, like I said, we've got some software releases coming out today or tomorrow. And keep an eye on that and um, keep an eye on the full windows and keep an eye on the basic uh, supervisor light. And um, otherwise, we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks, everybody.